Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from Our Space. Sometimes breakups have us asking ourselves the heavy questions. Sometimes we don't always get the answers we want, or any answers at all. Today on Our Space, let's put away our need for yes or no questions, and let's get reflective. Our first OP needs to take the time to understand their personality so they can make the effort to adjust their vision to see crazy as it comes. My crazy ex wants me back. Oh boy, I never thought I'd hear from this crazy nut job again. TLDR, crazy ex from near 15 years ago wants me back. Somehow found out my new number. Also, edit fixed some mistakes caused by typing while still upset. Years ago, I started dating a girl online. She lived in Kent, the UK. I live further north, let's say. We were getting along great. We had made plans for her to get to come to me for a weekend. When I get Facebook message from her ex. Now we will call him Bob and her Katie. His message was basically, Why you chatting with my girlfriend? She's mine. No one else can even look at her. Following that loads of threats to ruin my life, etc. Turned out he had been kicked out of his new girlfriend's place. He is a serial cheat and unemployed after getting bounced from the army as a PT instructor for being too out of shape to do his job. He had basically begged Katie to take him back. Katie took pity on him and had let him sleep in her garage on the camp bed. He of course thinks that's them back together. Anyways, he goes after me online when I refuse to drop Katie. Turned people on me, tried to get my Facebook account banned. He even threatened me after getting drunk and stealing her phone while she was doing laundry. Got a restraining order. Carried on, Katie comes down, we have a great weekend. She even said that her daughter approved as I was a nice bloke for a change. We meet a few more times, but then it happens. He calls her and begs her to take him back or he's going to end himself. She dumps me over the phone, goes back to him and goes just nuts, crazy. The biggest one being I come home from work to see my Facebook lit up like mad by people asking if I was okay. They had made a group to bash me and ruin my life, but my friends who were still friends with them Got it closed down after they tried to say I was a creep. Since then, I blocked all contacts and got a restraining order on both of them. Moved on. Every few months, I'd get a new chat request from an unknown account. It would always be Katie, upset that once again, he'd run off with someone else and wanted me back. Me in new relationship at the time told her that she had made her choice. I had moved on. She would keep making new accounts every time he cheated on her. I didn't hear from her for ages, then today, I have changed numbers, cars, etc. She calls me. I have no idea how she got the number I have now. It's the same crap, different day from her, only now he's run off with her daughter. Demanding I take her back and her 15 year old she had with Bob, take them in and, I know you're in poor health. I can move in and be your carer and we can be a family. You will love my daughter, Mia. There was a massive tantrum when I snap and tell her to F off. She goes on a rant about knowing I'm single and crippled and need her to look after me Never knew about Mia till today. Blocked her and spent the last 20 minutes shaking with my favorite dialysis nurse calming me down. Guess I'm losing this number. Just needed to vent about the witch, I guess. I can't believe she actually thinks I would take her back 12 years later. Normally I struggle to say no to people, but today I at least managed, even if I'm now feeling crap with stress. Let's see what the community thinks. First up, Silent Joe, 1986. Good call. I took back my crazy ex and she ended up stabbing me a couple of times. We've always heard the advice, don't stick your dick in crazy. Better advice is don't tell crazy they're crazy to their face. The OP replies, I think she's worried about some old nudes I took of her too. I destroyed them years ago. Don't want the memory. Indigo Wolf chimes in, My God, you need to make a post that tells all your friends if anyone shares your number with her again and you find out that friend is out of your life for good too. It's insane if someone thought it was okay to give her your number. Jersey Girl 1105 thinks, Wow, now this is a bona fide crazy ex. Thankfully you told her to pound sand. Gold star for you today. The OP replies, There's a reason I'm single. All I attract is crazy. The one girlfriend who wasn't? The mother tried to drag me into her bedroom in front of her own husband and my daughter. I noped out of that pretty quick. (laughs) Maywell Flower adds on, Is your restraining order still active? Because I would send police after her for violating it. Also, just because you're on dialysis, poor health does not entitle her for being back in your life. Especially since one of the children she accused you of being a pedophile to is still underage. 
Just saying, Mew weren't trying to be set up back then, nor now, while she is too desperate and stupid to realize you have great reasons to never forgive her, nor want her plus her kid back in your life. The OP replies, Already blocked and informed my lawyer, the old restraining order had been expired for years. Guess it's time for a new one. Oh wow, the dating pool can be a harsh place. When you first begin dating OP, you may become invested in someone who turns out to be not quite normal. If you find you're continuously falling for people who are just playing crazy, there may be a reason for that. A, you're just really nice and good person. Really nice people don't necessarily attract more than their fair share of crazy people. You're just nicer to them than the rest of us. B, you see the good in everyone. When you see the good in everyone, it can sometimes mean you are seeing things that are not there, or you're focusing on the good when the bad is much more serious and pressing. C, you ignore the warning signs. Warning signs can be easy to bypass when you're getting to know someone and starting to feel for them. You may stop yourself from what you may think of as passing judgment on them, or take things they say or do in the most positive light and make a lot of excuses for them. Or maybe it's a mixture of all three. What do you think? Our next OP doesn't need tough love. They need self-love. It's been one year to the day. July 26th is to the day, the worst day of my life. I'm 20 now, which seems a little young to be feeling like this, but I don't care. I feel what I feel. She broke up with me on July 26th, 2021. August 8th, 2021 would have been three years. At the time, I don't think it was because of her cheating. She gave me several reasons as to why she was leaving, all of which seemed valid though I disagreed with many being unfixable. However, at that point, there was nothing I could do to change her mind, and that was that. However, we had already signed a lease together, along with a third mutual friend, for an apartment starting in September, and I'd been wanting to move out for more space anyways. So, when the lease was signed, pre-breakup, it was a done deal. I didn't mind too much, because our schedules meant we wouldn't see much of each other anyways, and the mutual friend is cool, and not the problem here. In the last few months of our relationship, we had picked up Valorant. Us, along with several other friends, would play Valorant regularly when everyone was available. I liked it, for the most part, but it made me frustrated quite easily for whatever reason, and I started to not enjoy myself as much, before eventually not playing anymore. During one match, close to when I stopped playing, she met a group of people, including a guy named Boyo. The group seemed nice enough, just not my type to hang with, so she continued to play with them, while I dropped Valorant. However, she was hooked on the game, and so were the people she was playing with. So, when the day came that she left, I had asked her if she was leaving me for Boyo. She got angry with me, basically a, how dare you even suggest that kind of tone. But I had my suspicions. Nothing obvious. I never found his texts. I never caught them. Hell, he didn't even live in our state. But it still just set something off. Fast forward a month and change. We've been living at this apartment we leased for a short while, and my suspicions keep growing stronger. On move-in day, she spent the entire day on the phone with this guy, while we were all moving our stuff in. Barely conversed with us at all, including the mutual friend who had nothing to do with our problems. More alarm bells. Later that week, less than a week after she moved in, she's packing for a trip to the state he lives in. Claims it's because she has family there. She does, but posts on her snap story before I unadded her, confirms she's with this guy. So I do something I'm very much not proud of. I snoop her Discord DMs. I still feel dirty about having done it, but I found exactly what I was looking for, texts including some very lewd texts, with timestamps proving that she cheated. I didn't screenshot, I took no pictures, I copied no text, but I felt like throwing up. My heart was pounding and I was dizzy. I knew it. I wished I wasn't right, but too many alarm bells were going off. I confronted her about it a day before she left for the trip. I didn't even raise my voice, because I knew how easily she could use this against me if I even so much as yelled a little. Of course she cried, but she didn't make any excuses because at the time, I didn't even bring up the word cheating. I acted as if she only got with him after we were already technically broken up, which would still be upsetting, but not technically cheating. I told her how much it crushed me that she moved on so quickly, as if the last three years meant nothing to her. She said it was the hardest decision she's ever had to make, but her body language said otherwise. She showed no remorse at all, no sadness beyond making for having been caught. The most prevalent emotion was anger. I can't blame her, I'd be angry if someone had gone through my personal messages too, but I would never have done that, ever, if those alarm bells weren't ringing. She leaves on her trip. I'm numb. I'm in disbelief. I don't know what to say, what to do, or what to feel. I'm disappointed with how I handled the situation. I feel like I let her off lightly, but of course, 
she's not here for a week for me to properly express how angry I am and how upsetting this is. Fast forward to early June of this year, she finally moves out. A short conversation we had indicates that she was moving in with some other friends from work, but that's quickly proven a lie when I asked the mutual friend roommate about what was going on. She's moved in with Boyo. It was a remarkable move too. I left one morning to go back to my parents' house to spend some time there, and by the time I came back that evening, all her stuff was gone and her room was empty. So here we are, July 26th, 2022, a year later. I'm not okay. I still live from day to day the way I always did, but there's something missing. I still wake up on the verge of tears from dreams where things didn't go so wrong. I've been focusing on myself as people always say. I'm doing things that I enjoy, and honestly, I've been having fun doing that, but I can't shut off that nagging voice in the back of my head some days about how lonely I feel single, about how much I miss having someone, about what could have gone differently. If you've read this whole vent, thank you. I don't know what it achieves, if anything. I might just be yelling into the void. I don't know if there's advice to be offered or anything a read can gain from this, but I wanted to say it's somewhere where someone just might hear it. I'm tired. Our first community reaction comes from NC Deep Diver. She left to be with a guy named Boyo from a video game. She doesn't sound like much of a keeper. I would count my lucky stars, she is gone. Basic Quantity 9430 chimes in, Man, you are 20 years old. Either become a monk and move to a remote monastery, or get back into the dating game. Hang out with your unattached female friends more. There may be a reason why they like hanging out with you. Forget the woman that lied to you and who awoke every day to deceive you. OK Investigator 9547 says, What have you done this past year to improve yourself? Better education? Working out? Lost weight? Got a new job or promotion? Anything? You're living in the past, while life is passing you by. Time to find a new hobby. Make new friends, start running, do something other than stand still. The OP replies, I have actually. I started working out more. I finally got myself a drum kit, something I've been meaning to do for a long time. Got a one-time rock gig, did my university's summer band program, started practicing piano again, and finished my associates. It's just the bad days. There are some days when it hurts worse than others. Then, there are some days it doesn't even cross my mind. It has been getting better, especially since she moved out but today just hurts and I wanted to get it off my chest. Breaking up after three years together isn't easy, OP. You have a right to be upset. Unfortunately, I think it might have been over for her longer than she would have liked to admit, and maybe longer than you would like to know since she moved on so fast. Honestly, you'll never know what might have happened if things went differently, and that's okay. Sometimes we don't always get the answers and don't always find closure in those ways. Sometimes we have to make our own closure, and that means working on ourselves, practicing gratitude, and taking it day by day. Maybe instead, try asking yourself, what have I been struggling to let go of when it comes to my ex? Or, where have I been neglecting my own self-compassion? Or, I'm deserving and worthy of love because... And lastly, the healthy things that I'm doing to support myself during my breakup are... Go deep within yourself. These questions are meant to give credit where credit is deserved. And you, my friend, deserve a ton of it. It's time to put you first, OP. Thank you for joining us today on our space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We'd hate for you to miss it. Also, please let us know what you thought of today's content. We love hearing from you. Bye for now.